Hello and welcome to Storytime with Tom and Mike. I'm Tom. I'm Mike. Mike, what's with the voice you're doing, dude? My underwear's too tight. You're freaking me out, buddy. <laughs> you're freaking me out a little bit with all that. I don't know what that shit is. This is what happens. This is what happens when you're, you know, on stir- the, uh, what? On the stir crazy? Oh, a little bit, maybe. I mean, I did get to go out today and spend some time out because, uh, although I don't know that it's necessarily, um, essential um, I did go and get my, uh, my truck that I was working on. I went and got it inspected today. So I spent pretty substantial amount of time, unfortunately. I say unfortunately probably for the staff of the place, not for me so much at Pet Boys. I was there, um, three different times today. And, uh, I got into some, uh, you know, personal conversations with some of the staff because one of them made the uh, comment to me like, you've literally been here all day, haven't you? And I was like, yeah, off and on pretty much huh. because I was having issue, uh, fix the truck up and everything like that. Disconnected the battery. Wasn't thinking it erases all the stuff in the, uh, in the onboard diagnostic system. And, uh, it has to, because of emissions and I'm kind of torn on emissions when it comes to vehicles, because I do think it's a, it's a great idea to, um, you know, reduce emissions and reduce our carbon footprint and all that, you know, however you want to put it. But at the same time, I mean, I miss the days where I could, you know, throw brakes and exhaust on something. It ran, it stopped, all my lights worked, and I could get a sticker and go on my way. I just think, like, because, you know, I, I wonder how effective it truly is at times because, I mean, the numbers, depending on who you ask on whatever given day, it, it could mean anything. I don't know. But uh, today was one of those days I had to go out and just randomly, the guy's like, oh, go out. And sometimes you got to drive about 50 to 75 miles to, to get everything back on again. And I'm calculating, okay, I was 12 miles away, 12.2 miles away from Pep Boys is where I started out at. And uh, I drove here and there. I ended up driving like 102 fucking miles today (laughs) so that I could get the truck to do what I needed it to do to get an inspection and emissions inspection sticker on it. But I, (laughs) I, I finally did get it. Like I said, I mean, I was in Pep Boys and it's funny, um... You know, we're not going to we're not going to get anything dreary or anything like that. I had to use a public restroom twice today and I cringed at the thought of doing it. But I did I carried a little like uh, a little like one of the smaller size bottles of hand sanitizer with me. I literally must have put I put so much hand sanitizer on today that the inside of my truck smells like it and I wasn't even in my truck when I was putting it on. Yeah, I think we're all so, guilty of doing that. <laughs> I carried the scent into the truck with me on my person because <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I had to continually put it on because I don't know who the fuck is doing what. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to touch, you know, this, that, or the other thing. I did, however, pick up this really cool uh, belt. They had uh, – um, my significant other actually pointed it out because she went up with me the third time I went. And um, it's like a belt that looks like a seat belt, and it's got like the seat belt buckle on it. And I've seen these before, but I'd never seen one that I was like, oh, I like to have that. And it even like to the they made it look authentic to the point that the tag for the company and everything was like almost like a piece of fabric sewn on inside of it, like a seat belt would have the tag sewn on it. And it was only five bucks. Hmm. So I got a pretty cool ass belt that says Ford on it for you know another belt with Ford on it because that'd be like my second one uh, for for five bucks today, and um, I learned a very valuable lesson: um, don't take your battery off your vehicle for an extended period of time, then not drive it, and then decide to go get it inspected because it will not work out in your favor, not gotcha. at all. So. Gotcha. That was that was my story for t- oh 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 and I I had kind of a uh, positive um, conversation. There's actually oddly enough there was a security guard at the Pep Boys and he didn't come in until like the evening. I'm assuming he's there to help with closing so that nobody gets you know mugged or anything like that. I don't know. Hmm. But uh, I walked up to the counter. He's like, oh, oh, stay behind the line. Here I am again, habitual line stepping, getting up in people's you know personal space, not thinking about it because mm-hmm. I'm not used to it. But he was real cool about it, and we stood there and chatted about it and talked about his wife and how she works in the medical field. And you know, I was like, well, hey, tell her I said thanks because it's you know 
you know, uh, really difficult at this time and all that business. It was a very positive uh, outing. I had, I actually had a pretty decent time. I wasn't really that anxious, surprisingly, because normally, like right now, my anxiety from being in the house constantly and from not being able to go anywhere without feeling like, you know, I'm gonna come back fucking irradiated and looking like a super mutant or some shit. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it it raises me up, and and right now, uh, this was you know it raised my anxiety up, and this was something that raised up my, you know, feeling normal. I felt normal today. It was cool. It was very nice to feel normal for a change. Yeah. In spite of having to drive for 102 fucking miles in and around uh, within, you know, a 14 mile, because the guy said to me, he's like, "Oh, we'll just drive from here down to the Gap, and that ought to that ought to give you 50 miles." And I'm like, "Okay." I drove to the Gap. Guess how many miles it is from Pep Boys? 25. 14 miles, exactly 14 miles. And he thought it was 50 <laughs> miles away. I don't, yeah, I've, apparently, uh, he's as good at telling distance as I am at telling people's weight. It's, you know, <laughs> I'm terrible at it, and so was he. Because I said to him, I'm like, bro, I drove all the way out to Lake Strauss, which is an additional, um, what, 11 miles. So I ended up driving 25 miles and 25 miles back, which gave me 50. And then I ended up having to drive. I went back to my parents' house and ate something, and then I went and drove like even more. And I ended up uh, at a ninety-two, or sorry, one hundred and two miles for the entire day. And I was just like, "This is crazy. <laughs> this is just this is crazy. What a way to spend the day! It was pouring down rain. Yeah. And and here I am, just you know, <clears throat> driving all around the midstate. Well, I mean, I guess that's more eventful than my day. Today, I uh, got lost down a rabbit hole. So, oh. yeah. So, I was look. I was just floating around on social media, and someone posted on – oh, it was um, Snopes <laughs> yeah. posted, uh, fact check, were Chester Bennington and Chris Cornell murdered to cover up a pedophile ring? And the, you know, the, the description says false. Now, I didn't actually read the article because I didn't really – have any interest in it i was hoping that was false i was waiting for you to break out a bombshell and be like it was true but i was scrolling down through it like through the comments and i found this wait how do they debunk facts everyone who isn't a sheep knows that podesta murdered his own biological son chester bennington to cover up his global pedo- globalist pedophile human trafficking ring Go ahead and check out the Podesta art gallery and study up on adrenochrome and who uses it. Why are hot dogs talked about so weirdly in the Podesta emails? <laughs> you want me to be? It's all fake, but the evidence points to cover-ups. I suppose the next thing debunked is that Epstein actually killed himself. <laughs> <laughs> and the best, and the best response by far was that clip from. Uh, Happy Gilmore, or not Happy Gilmore, uh, Billy Madison, no, where the, yeah, right. where the like, guy's uh, like, you have made everyone in the room stump dumber. <laughs> having listened to that, yeah. yeah. At, no, at no point in, in that rant did you ever come to any conclusion or any thought that made any sense. Whatsoever, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and <laughs> so I thought, well, all right. I'm going to give this guy the benefit of the doubt at least a little bit and look up the stuff he said I should look up. Mm -hmm. So I looked up Podesta and there's two of them. There's Tony Podesta and there's John Podesta and John Podesta. He was probably talking about John Podesta, wasn't he? Well, that's the thing. He's talking about both of them. Um, Yes. He's talking about both of them. Um, He's interchanging them somehow. I think he's confused. So John Podesta First names can be hard to separate. You they, know. Sh- they sure can. Now I, I don't know who John Podesta was. He was some someone of importance. He and is I'm, a uh, he was a uh, uh, say a Democratic operative. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Well, apparently WikiLeaks had some emails between him and Obama and a few other people um, mm-hmm. talking about, among other things, hot dogs. And <laughs> there was something which was touted on um uh the alex jones show infowars oh um, well, you know, obvious which fact is obvious fact <laughs> source yeah absolutely a fact source uh that i guess obama bought sixty two thousand dollars worth of hot dogs and 
That's that an insane hot amount. Dog, hot dogs. That's a lot of hot dogs or some really <laughs> fucking good hot dogs. Like I want to try those hot dogs. Yeah, I would, you know? I would. I would enjoy. I mean, I'm thinking it doesn't have to be sixty-two thousand. I think like a thousand-dollar hot dog would probably be out of this fucking world. Yeah, really. I mean, <laughs> that shit's just like fucking the finest meat. It's... Yeah, I, I happen to think that Nathan's are amongst the best hot dogs ever, and I can go to the store and get, like, a, uh, you know, six-pack of those for, like, you know, four dollars, so I don't know what a thousand-dollar hot dog would be like. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> must be magical. I'm, so, I'm imagining. So I lo- I, I'm looking into this, and I'm like, okay, so they – one of the theories, the conspiracy theories is that – um the words hot dogs are code for male prostitutes as part mm-hmm. of their sure. sex ring their sex so human trafficking are, ring are hot pockets uh women i i don't know <laughs> i feel like I it would, should be or maybe hot dog buns hot dog buns or tacos mm. oh tacos another good one absolutely tacos. yeah yeah mm, moon moon pies i i don't know anyways moon, moon pies yeah <laughs> See, that's Obama buys $62,000 worth of moon pies. <laughs> it makes sense now. It's all true. Uh, so I looked into the Podesta Art Gallery, and that's some weird shit. There's some really creepy pedophile stuff in there. But that's jo- that's, that's not John. That's Tony Podesta. Mm-hmm. And it is. there is some creepy stuff in there. Google, search, Google image search that sometime. Uh, Tony Podesta Art Collection. Uh, and you'll find there's like stuff that looks like pedophiles. There's stuff that looks like naked aliens. It's just this really a bizarre collection of stuff that he has. There's it's not right. Um, I looked up Adrenochrome. That I do want you to Google image search right now. I, I really want you to. I want everyone at home. If you're not in the car, obviously, you know, uh, please go to Google image search. Mm. And type yep. in adrenochrome. That is A-D-R-E-N-A-A-D-R-E-N-O-C-H-R-O-M-E. I would have I would have missed I would have mixed that up. I would have said adrena, not adreno. Yes. Yeah. Adrenochrome. So chemical compound. Right. Now go to image search. And epinephrine. <laughs> The very first one is uh, a vial of blood, Bill Clinton, and uh, and a child with a hand over their mouth, and right. thousands of things of uh, Jeffrey Epstein and um, Hillary Clinton and Bill. I mean, you know, it looks to me to be another, uh, you know, Alex Jones kind of thing. Oh yeah, I bet, I, I bet uh, Shandel Shandelson's show dot com is probably a hell of a website to go to. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, no. We, I I recommend you check that link out because it's uh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> interesting, like uh, wow, and this is called journalism. <laughs> Child adrenochrome globalist cabals and mortality oh drug my God, of choice. They have a fucking picture of um, oh, what's his name? I'm looking right at his face and I can't think of what the hell his name is now off the top of my head. Patton Oswalt. With a little kid and a th- and like a thing on with an adrenochrome uh, chrome hashtag on Twitter, went on a hunt and caught this tasty morsel. Booyah! And it's a little kid, so <laughs> with Pat Oswalt's face in front of it. <laughs> I don't I don't know what to make of this. <laughs> this is disturbing on so many levels. That is really weird. Oh my God! There's another one with uh, with Tom Cruise from Top Gun and Kelly McGillis. Or I think was the name of the girl that was in it. And it says 1986. This is 2018, and Tom Cruise looks, you know, amazing, of course. And it's an old lady with glasses hanging in her bosom and shit. It says, "Thanks, Adrenochrome." <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't the, even know what to make of this. Look at the one of uh, Kathy Gifford. No, uh, yeah, uh, Kathy Griffin. Yeah, I saw Kathy that. Kathy Griffin. Yeah. And and this other woman who was not Kathy Griffin that when your adrenochrome and foreskin supply is cut yeah. off. It's a completely <laughs> different person. What, what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. This is this is the ridiculous <laughs> shit that uh that conspiracy theorists uh, thrive upon. Mm-hmm. It's so ridiculous. 
Oh my god, there's a picture of Bernie Mac. I don't even want to know what they're saying about him. Yeah. Yep. And so Adrenochrome was, as far as I know, uh, the only time I've ever heard of it being used as a drug was in the book um, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And in that uh, book and in the movie, it just sends him off his fucking rocker. It's like the most intense psychedelic he ever takes. And um, he takes too much of it. And he thinks that his friend has tits on his back. And and, uh, and he, he loses like days of, of time and memory. Uh, it's uh, it's really strange uh, movie. If you've never seen it, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, I strongly No, I never have. It. Oh, I strongly recommend it. It's a great I movie. I also see that, uh, yeah, the, the pedophile thing was the whole Pizzagate. Did you, are you familiar with Pizzagate? I'm really not. That was part of the rabbit yeah, hole I did just, not have time to dig into. I can give you a super, super basic um, synopsis of it was basically that um, Hillary Clinton and other Democrats were running a um, child sex ring out of the basement of a pizza establishment. Oh, that's, that's, right. <laughs> that's right. literally the whole thing. I don't even need to break it down any further because I just gave you the whole story. It's yeah. the most <laughs> asinine thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Now, I mean, you want to talk conspiracies and, and pedophiles. I'm more likely to listen to Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman actually, I think, has something to say. But, you know, this this guy, the person that I quoted is – I'm not going to say they're crazy because that's giving them too much credit. They're – this person is – this is misled. <laughs> um, and I say misled because there was a time in my life where I – believed in some pretty outlandish things myself and um it it takes i i had to wake up from that Tom, um yeah let me interrupt you real quick every little kid believes in santa claus i'm you not talking have to you don't have to count that into those times no i'm not talking about that but um you couldn't even take a joke well wow. well it oh. wasn't a, it wasn't funny yeah, so oh, yes yes actually it was I found it objectively quite funny. But anyways, please continue. I did not hear you laughing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, I was I was getting off into a topic that I really didn't want to get into too deeply anyway. Um so yeah, that's how I spend my afternoon exploring the uh the, oh. the hot dogs and the hot dogs really are the thing that really got my attention. <laughs> It's like, I, I personally, I love hot dogs. I know why? we, I why? know we, we have differing opinions on, on the culinary delight that is hot dogs. But uh, mm. I don't have a problem with hot dogs. I just prefer them to be cooked a certain way, That's as cool. for preference. I will eat them in other ways, but to me, okay. I Good. like pizza. Yep. And I will eat pizza in any form and still enjoy it, even like buffet, buffet, like, uh, you know, Chinese buffet pizza. But there is a certain level at which it's like depressing and sad because you've had really good pizza. So you go mm -hmm. to a mom and pop shop and you get a really good pepperoni, sausage, pepper and onions, right? Mm. Then you go to Papa John's or someplace. Horrible. Like Pizza Hut, you know, or or Domino's, and you get the same thing, and you're so disappointed. That's how it is with me with hot dogs. If it's not cooked on the grill, mm. it's it's just not the same for me. It's it's like eh, I really would have preferred it this way. It's still good. I just prefer it with that charred, burnt, crispy aspect to it that you only get from cooking it on the grill. Well. We can agree to disagree on that. I do enjoy hot dogs on the grill, but I will also eat them a multitude, uh, you know, boiled on the stovetop, wrapped in a wet paper towel and stuck in the microwave for 20 seconds to heat them up. I mean, there, there's many ways to cook hot dogs. Now, I'll have a and brat. I think they're all delicious. I'll have a brat any day of the week. You know, like a good stadium brat. 
or like a, a cheese sausage. Like mm-hmm. those are, yeah, mm-hmm. those I'll, I'll, I'll eat without reservation. I, you and I do have differing opinions on, on food. Yeah. Um, sometimes to, um, to a shocking degree <laughs> when I say shocking, because I'm shocked at what you'll put in your mouth. <laughs> You're not the first person that said that. I mean, you know, we've had the hot pocket topic. A hot pocket topic. I, I fucking hot love pocket hot pockets. topic is like a, a mall store that yeah, only sells uh, hot, to- hot pockets. <laughs> hot pockets and clothing related to said hot pockets, right. including clothing made from hot pockets. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, we- I burned my nipples off. Jeez. <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I know your love of hot pockets, and I've always had a a, a, a deep seated, just loathing for those. And we even went to the point at one point in one of our videos of talking about um, m- mountain pies, which mm-hmm. are those you know for those who don't know are this like clamshell metal case thing that has handles, long handles on it, yep, and you over the campfire. Yeah, and you put bread in there or dough or something, and then you stuff it full of food, whatever you want, like pizza toppings or or or, or whatever, and and then you cook it over the campfire. And after about ten minutes, it's just this ridiculously light, fluffy pastry that's so delicious. And mm-hmm. so to me, that's like when I want something like that as a hot pocket, that's what I want. So again, it's a matter to me of. I guess being spoiled by something better that makes the the frozen food version frozen food in general is really disappointing. It oh. looks so good, but it at, when you actually have it, you're like, eh. Well, I think that that depends. Um, you know, like because frozen like frozen cheese raviolis. I think are typically an ultimate good. I've not had them where I was like, oh, these weren't very good. Well, but, that's, uh, but that's TV frozen dinners, pasta. Yeah. That's know. frozen pasta that you thaw and cook. It's that's still frozen. Different. Okay. I'm talking about frozen meals, frozen mm-hmm. like appetizers, frozen chicken, all that stuff. I don't know, man. I get some really good uh, taquitos that are frozen and uh, pop them bad boys in the microwave and mix together some uh, salsa or picante and sour cream and dip them in them. Oh, fucking mwah. good stuff. I would have uh, to try them because every experiment I've ever had with frozen taquitos has ended in sadness for me. Well, you, I don't, I don't know, man. Maybe you need to eat them somewhere else where somebody else prepares them. Maybe then you'll be like, oh, these are our culinary delights. Maybe <laughs> I'm missing something. I, I think I'm a snob personally. I mean, I mean, all these things are also. I mean, I, I talk about how much I love hot pockets. I literally eat them like once every, you know, lately, probably once every three months. So it's not like I'm I'm constantly you know digesting Jeez. hot pockets and you know running my uh, my LDL and A1C through the fucking roof or anything like that. I just right. I just think you know there, there's a time for them and uh, if if we're in a hurry and I need to get something uh, you know some sustenance down, I'll eat some hot pockets. Hmm. I'm also not amongst or not not amongst. I'm not below eating a bowl of cereal for dessert too. So you know. Oh, I'm not against that at all. In yeah, fact, as far yeah. as desserts go, I think that's a fine alternative to cookies or something like that. Just a bowl of cookie crisp. Big old honking bowl of Fruit Loops. That's been my uh, my latest cereal oh, that, du jour. That's your go-to. For mine, it's um, with almond milk. For mine, it's uh, I, I, I'm loving the uh, Captain Crunch with the Crunch Berries. Only yeah, it's I the, have them too. Yeah, it's the generic version. It don't matter the generic man that Malto meal cereal. Great, uh, I Excellent. will fucking tear that shit up. Every single thing is as good as the original, and in certain cases, better. A little because, better, yeah. Because their version of um cocoa, uh, not cocoa crispies, uh, cocoa pebbles, I think are are maybe a step above the cocoa pebbles maybe Sup- it's just maybe it's just the cheapness in me that's saying this i don't know but uh, i Sup- like it superior superior mm-hmm. it is yeah. superior mm-hmm. the, the cereal is a superior culinary experience for me 
<laughs> and, and almond milk too. Uh, I love man. Almond milk uh, hits the spot for me because since I can't, you know, drink regular milk without, uh, you know, shitting the bed. Yeah, bl- I was gonna say blowing the covers off my bed like a fucking whale, um, breaching the surface during the middle of the night. Yeah, I I prefer lactate because it does actually taste like milk. We've had this conversation yeah, on we had this, this conversation, podcast, and and, and I, yeah, and I told you that uh, you know that the almond milk actually they've made great strides in it, and I think that it tastes uh, as much like milk as uh, as lactate does, and I think that that A three milk also, if you have a problem with lactose and you're not finding um, satisfaction with lactate. Maybe you don't have a problem with lactose. Maybe you have a problem with the A3 enzyme. And if you try that there, that is actually milk. And so like lactate is also milk. They okay. just take the stuff out of it. And that A3 actually, I mean, I found it. I don't know that mine's lactose intolerance. It could just be something having to do with milk, which I drank my whole life. But I can't stomach milk by itself. I can have it in things that I eat. I can eat ice cream and stuff like that as long as yeah. I don't overdo it. But uh, milk itself, can't do it. My brother's the same way. He and I both drank milk growing up like mad. He actually gets violently ill if he drinks any milk. You know? But so, he can, he's, he, he has no problem with cheese or butter uh, yeah, or anything in moderation, like that. In moderation, that stuff, yeah, it's okay. But, yeah. but just straight milk like that, man, I will be... Yeah. I'll be screaming for the John in nobody's in, in nobody's business. Yeah, in no time. I say no time and nobody's business came out. That was that was uh that was weird. Something about the process of, of it of it going undergoing culturing must Yeah, I don't know. You know, must have something to do with it. But yeah, that's um that's interesting. That's very interesting. I I don't really tolerate it well either. Um Usually what I end up with is what I call sulfur burps, Mm -hmm. which are these like just wake up in the morning with these burps that make me want to um, die. (laughs) You You feel like if if some spit accidentally flew out your mouth while you were belching, it would burn a hole through a steel beam. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And and they go on all day long. It feels like it would melt through plastic. Yeah. Um, Mine mine manifests itself in the in the downstairs quadrant where – you know, just horrible, horrible stomach pains and everything like that is what it, yeah. and it just, and it got to the point where I was like, I just can't do this anymore. And I actually really enjoy soy milk too, because it doesn't really have a really strong flavor to it. And, uh, it's, it's, a, it's light, but yet I found it to be satisfying also soy milk or, uh, or almond milk for me really, really, uh, really do it. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that almonds had nipples, and I found that out that that's how they milked them. So it was oh, actually that... it was really satisfying to know. Yeah, that's is that's really interesting. That's mm-hmm. sexy. It, uh, well, naturally, I mean, I can't eat almonds the same way anymore. Yeah, now I'm I just like, want to fuck an almond, dude. Ooh, look at those almonds. That's I just, good. I want to fuck a bag of almonds so bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> obscene. That's dirty. I, I just just to change the subject or not to change the subject. I heard something on the radio today. This is not my material, but it made me laugh out loud. And that was uh, it was uh, it was a bump on one of the radio stations, and they said, "Why do socks and underwear come in resealable packaging, but potato chips don't?" <laughs> And I was like, God, that's such a good question. Why is that? <laughs> I'm not worried about the freshness of my new underwear, t-shirts, or socks, but I do constantly <laughs> worry about eating stale potato chips. <laughs> Why the fuck do they have resealable packaging? I don't know. I asked I asked my son, and he said, I don't know, maybe if you have to return them so that they can easily then just seal everything back up and put tape around it and throw it on the shelf. I was like, I, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Nobody returns potato chips. Even okay, sorry. I don't know if you're familiar with the company called MeUndies. No, but I'm interested to know about them. Someday maybe they'll sponsor us because they're very well known for sponsoring popular podcasts, which we're not even close to being yet. <laughs> maybe someday we'll be able to sell MeUndies. Anyway, someday underwear will come our way. MeUndies is actually. I would. I would. I'm going to even give them a quick 
promo for free because I that's how much I love this fucking product. They are a pair their underwear that are completely um rethought. They are seamless and and, and very soft and, and they wick moisture away from your body and that they're very fantastic. comfortable. And they're so comfortable, dude. Like I actually for a while, like when I was first getting them, I was like looking forward to days when I'm, that would be my underwear. And now after like four years of being on like the monthly thing, like mm-hmm. there's a monthly like subscription plan, basically my wife and I have both been on them for like a year, two mm. years, whatever. And now I've completely replaced all my underwear with, with the me undies. So those are awesome underwear. And, I got to uh, ask you a question about it now. Since okay. I'm not, I'm not actively looking it up. Did they do away with the needless trap door, like s- static seal? Yes. Um, on the front of your underwear, I never yes. understood that because if you if you broke that static seal in the front of your underwear, your uh, your bits would be dragging on the inside of your pants all day long. It never would go back together again. That was... and I think most people probably pull down from the waistband in order to urinate not you know rip open the front stuff stuff that their dick through that fucking slot yeah yeah that male I... slot <laughs> it's a nice play on words there yeah oh i didn't even think about it you're right that is a good yeah. play on words um, well, if, if, if a lady pulls her penis through her pants then uh, it's still a male slot <laughs> well that's interesting that you I'm say not that. against it it's cool but That's anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> how the fuck did we get on this topic? I don't even remember where we got on the topic of underwear. I just started pr- pr- fucking giving a promo oh, to me undies. We talked, we talked about because I said about the uh, you know why do they come in resealable packages and oh, potato right. chips don't? You yeah, know, so those are a mail order. That's a mail order service, and you get it. It in the mail, and it comes in a packaging, and you tear the packaging open, and there's a bag inside, and it's resealable. <laughs> yeah, well, you don't want them to get stale. Yeah, I'm like, it's underwear for fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah it's I... great underwear. It's the best underwear I've ever owned in my life. But it's fucking underwear. It doesn't need to be in a resealable fucking bag. I, I can't explain to you because I got new socks. Socks came in a resealable bag. T-shirts come in a resealable bag. It doesn't. It makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, lunch meat. No. <laughs> Well, it, even if it does come in a resealable bag, I it's find shit. It's most the of worst the resealable. Here, use those zippers, and they are the easiest zippers to break. Yep. Yeah. Ever. Yeah, they are, and I don't trust them in the least. I actually had an experience um, that uh, grocery stores right now are not doing. Um, typically they would, you'd be able to walk up to the counter and you'd be able to order what you want. And they give you a sample, say, is this thin enough? And one time my, my, my mother was getting such a large order of lunch meat. I literally had a sandwich's worth of meat and cheese. I said to the guy, eventually I was like, do you have any bread back there? I feel like I need to complete this sandwich. <laughs> you know, it was one of those deals. Well, they're not, they're not doing that now. You can, you can call in and order stuff and they'll have it ready for you. Or you can order it at a kiosk and they'll have it ready for you. Or you can buy the lunch meat from a case they have it all bagged and pre-cut and what they did as an anti-theft and anti um bah, 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 contamination i guess maybe or what have you uh they take and they zip the bag supposed to zip it closed the whole way for some reason whoever was doing those we got didn't get the memo zipped it like three quarters of the way and then they took and folded the the deli label over top of the zipper so you couldn't get it open but yet the corner of the bag was still open, which is kind of weird. Mm-hmm. And you know those zippers suck to begin with. Yeah. Go ahead and, and try to pull a deli sticker off of them. And, and see if they'll still, still have work. It work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The deli sticker known worldwide for having an, um, an amazing um, adhering ability to whatever it touches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you'd have as much luck peeling fucking like super glue off. As you would peeling that fucking label. 
Mm-hmm. It's one thing that I that I could complain about with thrift stores. I love thrift stores. I love the idea of repurposing things and and upsell upcycling and all that kind of stuff. Uh, especially when it comes to uh, getting fabric and things like that. You might f- you find stuff that like I turned a a very large um um like button down men's nightshirt into like a nightgown. By altering it and everything, I love doing that kind of stuff. But they always have the worst stickers and labels. Whether it, you know, regardless of, of which place I'm talking about, Jubilee, Goodwill, or whatever, and they always manage to stick it on shit like glasses in the worst possible spot. Yeah. So that you like, you go, oh, I'll take a drink from my glass, and it's adhered to your hand because <laughs> the 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 glue never washed off. <laughs> <laughs> and I had somebody once tell me, "Oh, take some uh some olive oil and stick it on there and it'll help you get the the thing off." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, what it did was it made me drop the fucking glass because it was slick from the olive oil." And when I went to pick up the pieces, the broken shards of glass stuck to my hand because of the goddamn label. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work in my favor. <laughs> yeah, definitely doesn't sound like it worked well for you. Uh, um I love going to thrift stores just to find bizarre knickknacks and kitschy like stuff. Um, I'm mm-hmm. a big fan of finding like, you know, something like like shirts with ironic phrases on them, you know, like stuff like that. Anything, anything that's sort of. <laughs> the fuck was that? <laughs> my, my television this i have on i have the tv on in front of me and like this movie just happened to be super super loud out of nowhere <laughs> hold it right there the guy was screaming it's it's cops uh busting some people i, I don't know but it got real loud out of nowhere and i, I knew you were gonna hear it as soon as you paused i was like oh shit he heard it <laughs> how could i not dude turn your goddamn tv down <laughs> it was so fucking loud it probably registered on my audio I, I, i'm certain i'm certain that it did on mine <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it so did. uh yeah i um yeah i i actually go there a lot because there's a lot of elderly people around the area and they always have some of the coolest stuff that they will donate mm-hmm. including um sewing machines and and sewing notions and stuff and that's my uh that's my one weakness man i i just I own so many sewing machines because I can't help myself. Every time I see one there, I'm like, oh, $25 seems reasonable for that, so I'll buy it. And uh, hopefully one day I will use all of these sewing machines. Well, I have to say that I, as a Dungeons & Dragons player, mm-hmm. uh, own an inordinately large amount of dice. And I have no need for most of them. And every couple of weeks... I'm shopping and I haven't bought them in a while, mm-hmm. but I'm always like, Ooh, that's a cool design. And like, I have, I bought, okay. So I bought this set of dice that are made out of metal. They come in a metal tin. They're like lined with foam and, and they're awesome. And they're like black with like this dark cobalt blue letter. Mm-hmm. Like the numbers are made out of like this cobalt blue and they're beautiful. And I have a special rolling tray for them so they don't damage the fucking table. Mm-hmm. And they're impossible to read, so I never use them. I don't even need dice, and that sounds like something that if I saw that, I would buy it. Yeah, they're cool. I have and, done that so many times where I'm like, oh my god, I don't know what it is about this thing, but I gotta have it. It's. I think <laughs> there's just like, I think it's a geek thing. It's, there's something cool about it. that, And, and, and it, it's very much like, uh, because I think the thing is like the difference – one of the difference between nerds and geeks. Nerds are more intellectual. Geeks are more material, like stuff. Like I want this model. Mm-hmm. I want this. I want this shirt. I want this whatever. You know, I'll sit and wax intellectual about the physics of, of Star Trek for hours. But at the end of the day, what I really want deep down is – a fucking scale model of the goddamn Enterprise cut away with like all the decks showing. That would be I, cool as fuck. I am not the world's biggest Star Trek fan, but I would even like that. Yeah. It's just like, cool. It's fucking cool. 
yeah, it's just something cool to have. And I yeah. mean, I, I do love Star Trek, but I'm not like a, I'm not one of those guys that you would call a Trekkie or a Trekker or whatever the yeah, hell they I call would, themselves now. I would put now. myself in that same category. I will sit and watch it if I see it's on, especially uh, any any of the uh, Patrick Stewart, uh, you know, yeah. Next Generation stuff. My favorite, absolute. Yeah. I do enjoy the original Star Trek for its kitschy nature. Mm-hmm. And and goofy fight scenes and stuff, but it's but, totally uh, inaccessible by today's standards. Yeah, and honestly, the first season of the Next Generation, because Jennifer and I have been watching it, and the first season is is mm-hmm. not good. It's really not very well put together at all. It's and and apparently Patrick Stewart. There's a story that Patrick Stewart. Uh, did not unpack his bags for the first year of the show because he was so <laughs> sure it was going to get canceled. And like when cast members were uh, written out of a specific episode, they're mm-hmm. afraid they wouldn't be coming back. That's how uncertain that show was in the first season. But from the second season, about midway through the second season, especially onward, the writing gets so good. I just posted this amazing video. It's data dressing down wharf. Um, Data is in the command in, in command for whatever mm-hmm. reason he's been given command of the ship, and well, he I gives would assume an- that uh, you know because everybody higher in rank than him was off doing something on an alien surface. Yeah, so Worf is acting as his number one, and he gives an order, and Worf says something sort of catty like "finally," and. Data gets up and he's like, can I see you in the ready room? And as soon as the door closes, Data turns on him with anger. (laughs) And what I love about that is because it's so brilliant on the part of the actor that Data would want to appear angry. He's not angry because he can't feel anger, but he's showing anger because that's the appropriate human response that anyone would expect. So he says, I am not appreciative of the way that you – uh, acted on the bridge just now, uh, undermining me and questioning my orders. And he says, "Is it?" Uh, uh, he's like, I, I, "He says something to the effect of, I, I have, I have question. I've never been uh, given any problem for questioning Picard's orders." He says, "Yes, but you were a tactical officer in that capacity. Now you are acting as um, the number one, and your job is to perform." any decisions that I've made. He says, yes, but isn't it my opportunity? Isn't it my job to advise you? He says, yes, but once I've made my decision and your job is to enact it, not question it. If you don't feel that you're, yeah. If you don't feel that you're capable of performing your duties, I will relieve you of them and return you to tactical. Um, I won't mark it as a demotion, as a, as a disciplinary action, simply as a transfer. And he's like, Mm -hmm. no, I'd prefer to stay on my task. And he's like, good. Then I would expect you to treat me treat me with respect due of my officer of my current status. And then he and then he turns and he goes, nice. Worf, Worf, I hope this if this ends our friendship, I'm sorry. He goes, No, it is I who uh uh jeopardized our, our friendship. Um uh, uh I would still like to be friends with you. And I love that because it's like there's this moment of like I don't know, like, we're so cool, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I respect like, you for that. We, we good, bro. We good. You know, I mean, like, like this is this is totally a professional dressing down that I'm giving you and and we're still we're still bros. You know, <laughs> you know. But it's so like when I look at it, I think every manager in the world should be watching that clip and understanding that is how you deal with a subordinate who is being insubordinate Mm -hmm. you know you don't chew them out in front of everybody you go into another room you wait till the fucking doors closed and then you tell them exactly what's on your mind and why not scream at them make them feel stupid or belittle them you 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 give them facts Mm -hmm. because facts you can are actionable you know uh just calling someone an asshole or worthless doesn't accomplish anything I had a I have a very very personal experience with that from uh when I was first more or less first out in the workforce where uh I was working at a car dealership and um the I was 
close to the service manager's office because his office was in the shop, which was kind of strange. But um, I had done a used car check, and it was like the middle of winter. And I negated to make sure that the air conditioning worked completely in this vehicle. I overlooked it. It was a complete accident. And the uh, owner of the dealership had taken this vehicle out. Why he took out this, you know, old, older kind of junky vehicle instead of a new one, I still am not sure. But the service manager saw me uh, numerous times uh, during the morning and never said a word to me and waited until – uh, he was handing out paychecks. It was a Friday afternoon. He was handing out paychecks at lunchtime and decided to, as he got to me to hand me my check, stand there and dress me down in front of everybody in the shop and the body shop. And uh, believe I had the balls to do it or not, uh, I went to his office and said, I need to talk to you for a minute and slammed the door behind me. And I was like, if you ever fucking do that to me again – I am going to have your ass in the owner's office regardless, and I'm going to quit, and I'm going to seek a lawyer and all this other crap. I was so fucking angry. It never happened again, thankfully. Yeah, and that's actually, unbelievable. I, I ran into him a couple – maybe five years after that, and uh, I was working doing something else, and he's like, hey, you think you might ever want to come back and work at the dealership again? I'd be happy to have you, and I was like, ah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I I know when I was when I was a boss, I never. I don't care if the person did something, you know, egregious in front of somebody else. I would always pull them to the side and be like, "Look, you know, you can't you can't do that." Yeah. And I might make them apologize, but I never dressed anybody down in front of other people because that just I mean, you take a problem and make more problems out of it. Well, by doing shit like that. And it's purely disrespectful. Uh, yeah. It's just not dis- – it's not respectful in the least. And if you cannot treat your employees with respect, how do you expect them to come through for you when you need yeah. them the most? Or treat you with respect. Um, and I really think that having a great job uh, requires having a great boss. If mm-hmm. you don't have oh, yeah. a, if you don't have the one, you don't have the other. I'm sorry, it just does not work any other way. And I would challenge anyone to prove me otherwise. I've only probably in all the years that I I've worked, I've probably only had, I would say, one or two bosses that really, that really got it. Mm-hmm. And that were and that were the kind of people that I would run through a fucking brick wall for. Yeah. You know, only like one or two though. Like the rest of them, I you know, I I I might I might play the game and be nice and everything like that. But if uh, it came down to it, I wouldn't sacrifice myself for them. Right. At at any rate, so you know, right. uh, when you do get somebody like that, it's uh, it, it makes you it makes uh, work. Uh, a lot easier and it sometimes you know if you're having a day that kind of sucks uh you know and you're you're getting ready to go in or whatever it makes it a lot easier to push mm-hmm. yourself mm-hmm. than uh than other times so yeah um yeah so yeah it's great to have a good boss it's great to have and i mean what i do and i don't want to get into specifics but i feel that what i do benefits people not profiteers and that's a big difference because of what type – the type of work I do and the the, mm-hmm. the industry that I'm in specifically. Um, I, I serve the public. And as a public servant, if that doesn't give it away, then you're an idiot. As a public servant, um, uh, it, it's my job to make sure that the end-all output of my work improves taxpayers' lives in some measurable way. And what I do does. I've seen the results. I've seen the numbers change myself. And that you're making is, it sound like you're a police officer. Well, I'm not, but <laughs> I support police officers in my work. So, you know, um, and and I will say this about our our, our brothers in blue: they're good people. Um, uh, I I really hate this anti-cop movement. 
Uh, I realize there's some shitheads out there, but there's a lot yeah. of good fucking cops out there every day busting their ass for you. And 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 the ones that are shit, guess what? They're shitty doctors too. They're shitty lawyers. They're shitty garbage men. They're oh, yeah. shitty everything. So stop saying that all cops are assholes because they're not. I'm sorry. I don't buy that. I hate that mentality. Uh, I I didn't say that I subscribe to that. I feel like you're addressing you're addressing me on this. And no 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 no, no no. I'm addressing right. everyone on this because I'm also talking to any listener who feels that way. Please give them the benefit of the doubt. They're human beings doing a job. I know you know this. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you have a great deal of respect for all manner of responders. Um, I have a great respect for, for everybody. It doesn't matter who That's you are. That's true. Unless, yeah, unless you give me a reason to feel otherwise, we're cool. I'm cool with everybody until you give me a reason not to be. Right. And then it's on you. Right. <laughs> it's right. it's on you. It isn't on everybody else like you. It's on you. <laughs> so, you know. That's uh, that's the way that I prefer for for people to uh, interact with me. Also, so you know, mm-hmm. you we're, we're, we're you know, you and I can be cool with each other until unless I do something, you know, that was so bad that it pissed you off and turned you off to me completely. But I don't usually find that that's the uh, that that's the issue. I do have there was one guy that absolutely hated my guts. And I always thought like he had a reason for it, and he was sitting behind me one day at lunch, and if he hears this, he'll know that I'm talking about him. He probably thinks I am anyway, but um, and I haven't seen him in, in years, in years. I actually did run into him uh, about a year ago somewhere, and he just looked at me like he knew me, and I was like – and just walked away. <laughs> but he was sitting behind me talking to one of my friends, and he goes, I could hear him. He was talking out loud, and he goes, see that guy Mike there? And my friend's like, yeah. And he's like, I don't like him. <laughs> and my friend's like, why? And he's like, I just don't like him. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, that, that settles that. I always thought he didn't like me. Now I'm positive he doesn't like me, and he doesn't even have a good reason for it. <laughs> like somebody's poked him with a stick once and said Mike, and they were like, oh, shit. You know, and something snapped inside him. He's like, I'm going to hate this guy named Mike that I don't even know yet. <laughs> you know, it was it was awkward. Anytime I would run into him, he's a big, scary guy, like compared to me. And I'm like, he looks kind of, you know, like he could put a hurting on me and not even think twice about it. So he looks you know. like the orange monster from the Bugs Bunny cartoon. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> the but guy he, with the uh, sneakers. Yeah. He just, he just, yeah, I know what you're talking about. He just, I don't know what it was. He's the only person I've ever run into that, uh, that, that felt that kind of, you know, feeling towards me with no reason. I gave him no reason not to like me, but, uh, he, he took, he took the mantle and ran with it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I'd give it to him this way. He was consistent because I was around him for hell, 10 years and he hated me from the first day to the last day. <laughs> So some people you was just his thing. <laughs> some people you just set off and and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, you, I, you remind yeah. them of something from their I don't know, boogeyman or something. I I really don't know what that is, where it comes from. I think it said he hate me cuz he ain't me. That's what it is. Oh yeah, is that what you think it is? Yeah, that's, probably. That's uh that's mm. insightful. I don't know. He'd be, he'd be real be jealous right. of me now because he was balding and I have, you know, full head of hair. I'm, you know, <laughs> so that give him another reason not to like me. I do like it when you find someone that you knew in high school who was a smarmy fucker. And when you mm-hmm. look him up on Facebook out of curiosity, you're like, oh, wow, that guy balded completely. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't really worry. You know, for me it's not necessarily that. I, I look at him and uh I, I find something personally that uh that I think is demeaning and I you know, I don't necessarily have to share it out loud. And mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh, I always knew you'd get your come up and and eventually I end up feeling bad about it and going, Man, I really shouldn't have felt or said that, even though I didn't say it to anybody, I only said it inside my head. Right. You know. And then I'm like, Yeah, well, eh, whatever. I, I don't need to be petty. I, I, I have very few people that uh, we went to high school with that I am I would even consider being like, oh, you got what you deserve there, friend, you know, and mm-hmm. I, so, you know, I, I, I like to have the I like to to be a lot more calm about things. I try to be. Well, you know, it's funny because I do 
have nothing like I don't have any real feelings at all towards anyone from high school. You know what I mean? In terms of like anger or anything like that. There's some stuff that I wish hadn't happened, but I recognize that I was an asshole when I was a teenager and most people are. So it's kind of okay. Like, it's like, yeah, yeah. they were dicks, but I mean, I was kind of a dick too. And I, I, to a certain degree, I invited some of the, the bullshit that was thrown my way. Um, because yeah, we of the all, way I we acted. All kids trying to find our way, trying yeah. to figure out who you are right. and everything else. And it is what it is. I don't, I mean, nobody, you know, cut off one of my ears or, or uh, anything like that when we were in high school. So I don't, you know, really have a whole lot to complain about. Like, oh, this person looked at me funny or yeah. butted in line in front of me in the cafeteria one day. I mean, if that's the worst that they did and that's the worst that happened to me, I was doing pretty fucking good. Yeah. I was doing pretty yeah. fucking good. Yeah. And, I, uh, you know, it's the way it is. I try to be, I try to be cool with everybody and I'm not like, you know, tooting my own horn here or anything, but I guarantee you if I walked into a room full of strangers, I don't care who they are. You know, I can strike up a conversation yeah. with, with people. It's just, it's the gift of gab and I, and I possess it. I have it too. We both have that capacity or that yeah. facility or whatever. And yet we're both introverts, which is really interesting. Yeah, I've never quite understood that myself. Like today, for example, I told you I had to take my, my truck back. It was on the third time that it finally everything cleared and it passed. And I said to the guy that was uh, doing my inspection, he was getting stickers. And I was like, are you serious? And he said, yeah. I was like, man, I could kiss you in front of the and everybody else that was in the store. And everybody's laughing and, you know, the guy's like, whoa, 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 not in here and everything. It turned out that the guy uh, knew my significant other. Uh, they went to high school together, so it was kind of cool anyways. But uh, <laughs> just an example of how I would just say something and not not really worry about it, and it wasn't anything bad, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, I, and I brought everybody, you know, a good chuckle out of it. And, <laughs> you know, it was cool. It was good. It was good. I like making people laugh. Sometimes it's a defense mechanism, and sometimes, you know, it's because I genuinely enjoy it. I inappropriately use humor a lot. Mm, yeah. It's a mask. I, I yeah, it's it's a uh, it's something that that you use to cope, and that's okay. Yep, that's okay. It is it is in it is in moderation. Like when you when you do it all the time, uh, I think it becomes uh, troublesome. And I've been actively trying to recognize those times when I'm using it inappropriately and reel myself back in. It's, uh, I think if you ever stop learning things about yourself, I, I guess, you know, that's kind of the end of the line. I don't know because yeah. I learn stuff about myself constantly and it's there's always some form of self-exploration no no dirty puns intended there you know um that that makes you uh makes you i don't know it makes me feel more makes me feel more whole makes yeah. me feel more like myself yeah i know i, I kind of got off track there a little bit but that was that was the feel-good moment for this yeah <sighs> Ah, yeah, yeah, the, uh, the, the, and the 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 uh, exploration of self for the purpose of self growth is a fantastic and deep subject. I, I think we could spend a lot of time on it. Wouldn't oh, you yeah. agree? I mean, I would love to, but that really sounds like a story for another time. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We'd love it if we if you could uh, stop by iTunes and review us and maybe give us a rating. Uh, you know, a rating of five would be like five prayers, <laughs> 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 and a review would be ten prayers. So you know, if you've got a little little somebody that you've got in mind, okay, that's really insensitive, but you know what I'm saying. Feed anyway, your spiritual self. Yeah, feed your spiritual self. Um, so anyway, um, uh, you can also reach us at storytime with Tom and Mike at gmail.com. So if you've got any gripes, complaints, comments, or love letters for us, please send them our way. Uh, finally, you can find us on Spotify and iTunes and follow us there, or you can go to our website, dembeans.biz. Um, there's lots to do there. There's over three posts. Oh, 
over three. Over three posts. Probably more as of this 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 recording. Yeah. Uh, or as as of this recording, there's three. By the time this publishes, there'll be like five, maybe six. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh thanks again for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed giving it to you. Oh yeah. Feed that spiritual self. Bye.